Thanks for joining our presentation on uh, Anne Energy. Uh, my co-hosts co are uh, Ratnaka and Damien and um, Chris. And in the name of us all, a very, very warm welcome. Okay, so to start you off, uh, a little bit about a and &E Energy. Um, who are they? So they're bringing together producers of green energy with the industry and communities. And so they're bundling 8,000 megawatts of renewable energies and using green energy marketing and sales and a 24 seven energy trading system, they provide the services. Uh, now we are going to present our methodology, which we have used in our project. And uh, next we are going to introduce our object. So what we are going to to end what we uh, we will achieve, and what kind of data we are going to use, and what kind of features we we are used, and uh, which me metric we have used for the evaluation, and uh, data analysis, the exploratory data analysis we have done, and we will show some uh, interesting, and we introduce our models, and then we present our results. At the end, we, we give the, some conclusions and also we uh, uh, give our scope of view, our future uh, work. Yeah, coming to methodology, we followed the, 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 the classical design cycle, life cycle. Firstly, we get into the domain uh, knowledge and we have grabbed uh, uh, some important uh, features or something like this and we collected the information from the internet and also from uh, an energy, they provided also some data and we clubbed all together and we have cleaned, it's not moving. We, we, have, we, we have clubbed all the data into uh, one, one uh, place and we have cleaned all unnecessary data and then we look into the each detailed data and we filled all holes and also the, uh, if it is a consistency or not, and we checked and we cleaned all the data and we given to the uh, models uh, with the uh, scaled data. And then we predicted the interesting uh, values and uh, we visualized the results in the end. So, uh, so what is the day ahead mar energy market? So we auction off megawatt hours uh, by setting a price in the morning at 10 a.m. for every hour of the next day uh, and repeat this every day. So uh, from midnight in the morning to midnight at night for every day, there's one price every hour. Uh, now, if we set the price too low, then we lose the opportunity to sell at a higher value. These orange bars are the actual values and uh, then we have predictions. Uh, but if we set our price too high, then uh, we lose the bid because someone will buy it from a, a cheaper provider and we stand to lose the entire hour's worth of income. So we aim to get a, as close as possible to the day ahead price without losing the bid as often as possible. Yeah, and of course, um, the clue for this is the data um, and the amount of data we had for this project was huge. So on top of the information provided by a &E Energy, um, we used uh, tools as the instant uh, data scraper and um, the Wayback Machine uh, Internet Archive to um, scrape the internet for additional weather and solar metadata. And this amounted in the end to a total of 14 gigabytes and more than 1500 files that all had to be merged and engineered and um, we kind of got our own uh, Python scripts going to do, achieve that and get a clean data set. And um, what we amounted to was uh, weather data for um, um, 523 weather stations throughout of Germany. And um, of course it had to be relevant to the time frame that we were working with. And so um, 295 of these stations actually provided um, relative data and so we used the data of the um, 101 biggest wind parks in Germany and based on the amount of megawatts they produce, we weighted them in importance from zero to one. And 
Q, get one. Zero to one. Um, and for each weather station, we applied the rule that if they are within a 15, 50 kilometer, kilometer radius um, of a wind park, we will include the data uh, multiplied by the weight of the wind park. Um, so to end up with a simple feature, we calculated the mean of all the stations that passed our rule. And so we ended up with one basic um, um, wind intensity feature. Um, overall. And if we plot this feature against the actual price data we have, um, we can find that we have a very decent um, correlation. And the Pearson coefficient we calculated for this was at minus 0.44, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, and on top, of course, um, we had a look at already existing models. So if you look at the dark blue line, you can see what the optimum um, correlation would be. So um, the mustard colored line is always uh, the model performance. And you can see here um, that um, these uh, models tend to um, underestimate when the prices get high. So this could either be a feature or a bug, depending on how you look at it, because it will prevent major losses, but also the uh, prediction is very conservative. Um, and um, of course, we needed some um, evaluation metric to um, use to have a look at the performance of our models. And we opted for the um, MSE, which is the main squared, squared error, a uh, mean squared error. Um, and um, so if you overlay the predicted with the actual data and subtract the actual data from the predicted, you will get the residuals. And if you average, average all these points and square them, you will get the MSE, which is a measure across the board of the, uh, of the performance of the model, and it will punish outliers. So this is why we opted to go with this evaluation metric. Uh, Anne NIT has provided uh, data, and uh, from uh, in the data, so two models are uh, giving the predictions and uh, the one, one, the blue one is the, the actual values. And the, the, if you see the graph, uh, the completeness of the data and in CWE data, so the weekend's data is missing. So this we are going to drop because the weekend's data is more important. Uh, yeah, uh, here, if you, if you see in the weekly seasonality, the Sunday and the Saturday, so the, the prices are going drastically down. So uh, this influences a lot. So that's why we decided to drop the CW data. And if you see the daily seasonality, the mornings and the afternoons, it is uh, prices are going up and uh, in the midday it's down. Uh, if you see yearly seasonality, the, um, in the summer it is going down and in the winter and the spring time it is going up. Uh, if you see the trend uh, over the, uh, 2019 to 2021, the prices are increasing. Yeah, we have uh, developed two kinds of models. So one we using the Facebook family models and other one is Keras uh, uh, formula, Keras uh, family models. In Facebook, so we have used the profit and uh, the newly developed uh, neural profit. We have used the and then the Keras LSTME models we developed. Yeah, firstly, I am going to present the LSTM results. So the, the left side of the split line that, that shows the train data and the right side, it is uh, test data. The, uh, the yellow line the, that shows the actual values and the green line, uh, the predicted values from the test data and the blue line and the predicted values from the so, sorry, the green line uh, green line shows the predicted values from the train data and the blue line is uh, predicted values from the test data. So if you compare these two graphs, so mm, it gives the better accuracy. Yeah, if it is zoomed into the 48 hours, so side by side, uh, you can see also the, the predicted values are very close to the uh, actual values. So this is also some uh, somewhat evidence of uh, better accuracy. And we got a, a 
the mean standard error 36 with this model. And we have uh, forecasted 24 hours uh, uh, ahead uh, uh, electricity prices uh, that, that uh, you can see on right side of the graph that the light blue and it, which is uh, almost in the same uh, seasonality like in the test data that is uh, shown in on left side. Uh, the yellow line also shows the actual prices that is uh, it's, it's matching the seasonality and also how uh, that uh, going to uh, change the uh, day ahead values. And yeah. Yeah, so now for the profit bid. So this is a single 48 hour example time frame being analyzed and the mustard line is the actual price and the rest are the models. So there are many different versions of neuro profit and um, as well as the Facebook profit. And it is interesting to see that the neural profit is performing way better than the Facebook profit and is more than three times faster in doing so. Um, so to make the test more robust, uh, we, ran, we ran multiple iterations of 48 hour runs and averaged these. And um, we also imply um, various built-in functions um, such as the seasonality, German holidays. Um, we tried autoregression with three hidden layers and 10 epochs. And we also used um, the existing EQ model data um, as a lag regressor. Right, so if you remember back to the beginning, the cost of uh, overbidding in red versus underbidding in green, uh, the vendor models are always 24 hours ahead as opposed to our 48 hour model predictions. But we decided that that kind of evens out uh, the field. And, uh, but we wanted to mention that the CWE model has an uh, unfair advantage because it's not being judged on the weekends where the prices are the most volatile. So up to now, the LSTM model, uh, which Ratnaka um, introduced earlier, has the best model fit. But unfortunately, because of the penalty of losing out when you overbid, um, it makes it look bad in this comparison. Um, this is another graphical uh, uh, representation of what's happening here. So uh, you might have a very high um, MSE, but because we've only had tiny, tiny over uh, predictions, our um, calculated or theoretical income is actually quite high. Uh, and this is opposed to a model here with only 49 MSE. Uh, so very, very close to the actual uh, um, mustard line. But unfortunately, at the wrong times, it's over predicted and lost a lot of money. So um, it loses out on uh, uh, income provided. So, and then finally, uh, we discovered uh, a Facebook uh, uh, profit or a neural profit model uh, feature called lagged regressor, uh, which is basically using, uh, uh, helping the training of the, uh, the model. And to help it train, we use the EQ model results and the matching ones. And it's given us a, a fantastic MSE, as well as huge amounts of income. Um, so we've... Uh, we were very happy and positively surprised about this outcome. So what's happened here? Um, the EQ model overstates uh, the prices quite regularly. Unfortunately, I couldn't put this in a graph because they are calculated differently to the two model lines here. But um, the EQ model overstates a lot, whereas the neural profit basic model understates a lot. And in combination, it seems to have this happy effect to uh, create a wonderful result, which is um, uh, bringing us the uh, lag regression is the, the, the dotted line here, um, which overstates very, very little and uh, brings in a lot of income, as you can see in the long yellow bar. So um, there are so many variables that we've not been taken into, uh, taken into account due to uh, time and project scoping restrictions. And these are as follows. So losing a bid uh, might not mean losing everything. There are still other short-term markets if you lose a bid. Uh, there's also a lot of rules and regulations around the market, such as subsidies when prices go negative for a certain length of time. 
uh, we could have merged a lot of our models with ensemble methods that might bring out even more strengths in individual models. And neural profit has future regresses. So not only the, the lag regresses, but if you do weather forecast, you could put those in as well to create an even more powerful model. Uh, and we can also apply uh, weights to our existing models to shift or smooth uh, model results, which would be an advantage, for example, for the LSTM model and so much more. But following the aforementioned profit and loss calculations, <laughs> here are the results. And uh, so if you would have invested a hypothetical 1 million over a month, um, then our EQ lag regressor would have brought you 854K of euros of uh, income. The EQ model, the next runner up, uh, which is a vendor model, so a real live model, 570K. And the CWE model, uh, trails third with uh, 482k. So basically we used the model to beat the model and we won on our uh, original metric as well as the, in absolute terms, but it was all on our terms and conditions. And so uh, it's a complex world out there. Thank you very much for listening.